Hey, welcome everyone to this uh, AMR, AMR training hackathon that we've been put together with uh, MRC Claims Big Data uh, Cloud Platform uh, and Infrastructure, uh, as well as JPIMR, this joint program initiative for AMR, uh, which both of which are going to be introduced specifically, and then Phage, which is the Public Health Alliance for Genomic Epidemiology. Today we're going to do kind of a focus on three, three speakers and myself, and then a quick panel discussion going to focus on kind of just the basics of databases, resources, and tools for antimicrobial research. Um, and I'll introduce each person as we go. But first, Kara Sang is going to talk about uh, database and resource for AMR genomics. Mike Felgarn is going to talk about overview of AMR gene prediction tools. And as Mendez is going to talk about some of the harmonization and phage stuff, it's how to standardize AMR results and report them. And I'm going to give a very quick demo of the things they've talked about on what you would actually run on the command line to do so. And then we're going to wrap all up with a panel discussion about, you know, various questions and things people have about uh, that have come up from the day. Um, so the small bits of housekeeping first is um, you're welcome to ask questions throughout. Um, you'll see there's a Q&A kind of panel. Uh, so any questions you have and you can ask anonymously if you're if you're anxious or nervous and don't want to reveal your name, mm -hmm. you can ask, ask questions through there. And then if someone else asks a question that interests you, you can vote it up. And we'll try and address them, some of them at the end of each talks, but then probably cover a lot of them in that panel discussion at the end. So first, let's introduce all the different bodies that have been involved and et cetera. And we'll start with uh, Emma Griffiths to introduce Phage and what Phage is. Great, thanks. <laughs> thanks for that, Finn. I'll just share my screen. Can you all see this, uh, see the slide here? I'll take that as a yes. Okay, so. Okay, yes. Great. Okay, thanks. So hello, 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 everyone. Uh, it's so great to see all of the different participants today. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, wherever you are. Uh, my name is Emma Griffiths. I'm from Simon Fraser University in Vancouver, Canada, and I'm the chair of the Data Structures Work Group. Uh, for the Public Health Alliance for Genomic Epidemiology. On behalf of myself and all of my colleagues, colleagues, I'd like to uh, echo Finn's welcome to you all to our joint phage, climb big data, JPI AMR, AMR bioinformatics workshop. So Finn, as well as myself, Andrew Page, who's one of the hackathon workshop organizers, as well as Inez Mendez and Mike Felgarden, who will be presenting later on today, we are all members of an international organization called Phage, or the Public Health Alliance for Genomic Epidemiology. And Phage is a global coalition that is actively working to establish consensus standards, to document and share best practices, to improve the availability of critical bioinformatics tools and resources, and to advocate for greater openness, interoperability, accessibility, and reproducibility in public health microbial bioinformatics. And we tackled this work from a number of different perspectives via different work groups. And Finn, Andrew, and as Mike and I are all members of the Data Structures Work Group, which is, you know, obviously the best one. Uh, and in the Data Structures Work Group, one of our top priorities is the development, promotion, and implementation of data standards in public health settings to help increase interoperability, reproducibility, and auditability. So we have a number of different projects on the go, uh, one of which is very relevant to this workshop. Uh, one of the most common activities in public health pathogen genomic analyses is the detection of genes and mutations that correlate with different phenotypes. Now, there are a number of different tools that can be used for answering the same kinds of questions. And those tools can vary in their scope of function, as well as the data structures used to encode their inputs and their outputs. And that variability creates difficulties in interpreting and communicating about the results used for decision making. So because of this, Phage, particularly the Data Structures Work Group, have developed a specification that can standardize the way gene and mutation results are expressed by different tools. Our first application of the specification was for the detection of antimicrobial resistance, which is a massive problem, I'm sure, as you all know, around the world. We've also created some tooling in the form of different parsers, as well as interactive reports to better facilitate comparisons and data sharing. Um, that was the really, really short version, and Inez will tell you lots more about this uh, later on in the workshop. 
Um, we've also created a contextual data or metadata specification for SARS-CoV-2 genomic surveillance to better enable data harmonization, integration, and data sharing. So whether you're future-proofing your own data for reuse down the road, or if you're sharing with trusted partners or with public repositories, we hope that it'll help to better streamline analyses and processes. Uh, we've also created some tools and resources for that spec, for example, a data collection template, as well as SOPs for data curation and data stewardship, as well as protocols for submission to public repositories. And our tools and standards are being put into practice all around the world in different pilot projects, sequencing initiatives, and databases. So for example, uh, parts of our SARS-CoV-2 spec are being implemented at NCBI, um, and our uh, AMR tools and, and standards are being uh, trialed in PulseNet Latin America and the Caribbean, as well as Relabra, which is a surveillance program by the WHO's Pan American Health Organization. And we're really excited to be able to work with folks in real world settings because the more standards and tools um, can be implemented in the field and tested, the more fit for purpose they can become. So that's it for me. Uh, if you'd like to try out any of our standards and tools, you can find them at our GitHub site. If you'd like to know more about our activities, you can check out our webpage. And if you're a bioinformatician or a software developer or you're involved in public health and maybe are interested in joining, please do get in contact with us because we're always looking for enthusiastic and capable members. Um, so thanks very much. Enjoy the rest of the workshop. And I'll now hand things over to Team JPI AMR. Thank you so much. I am just going to share my screen and hopefully get it right. And hopefully you can see my screen and everything is good. So yeah, I would also like to echo a massive welcome to everybody. Really excited to see so many people here this afternoon, especially on a Friday afternoon. Uh, so I'm Carolyn Johnson. I'm a program manager for the MRC, and I'm actually here today to recognize that uh, represent JPI MR. And yeah, I'd really like to thank you for taking part in this event. And I'm just going to give you a super quick bit of background about the JPR IAMR before we get started on this. So JPI IAMR is an alliance of international funders that was created to coordinate the way we fund AMR research. It was made in 2011 as a European initiative, which was supposed to bring together a panel of different funders. And it now includes members from five different continents and 28 member states. So what do the JPI AMR do? Well, they hold some transnational funding calls for AMR, re both research and networking. And the most recent call was for research and transmission of AMR. And we should have an outcome for that at the end of the year. JPI AMR also run workshops and networking events. And that's why we have such a massive interest in this one. Um, so one of the main aims of the JPI AMR was to create a more joined up approach for organizations funding AMR research. And to do that, they produce this amazing strategic research and innovation agenda. Um, and the SRA outlines six sort of key priority topics within the AMR field, so therapeutics, diagnostics, surveillance, transmission, environment, and interventions. And then each topic has a defined set of objectives. And this SRA has recently been broadened out to include resistance to antifungal therapeutics too. And I guess one of the most relevant points to this for this event is that the SRA does really sort of underpin the need for developments incorporating personalized medicine and artificial intelligence to tackle AMR. So just to put some really quick numbers onto JPI AMR, the collaboration has invested more than 100 million euros in research into new therapeutics, stewardship and surveillance, as well as studies on controlling the spread of antibiotic resistance. And they've funded 117 projects and 38 networks across 71 different countries so far, and this includes 25 projects with involvement from low and middle income countries. So just a quick look at some of the different types of funding offered by JPIMR. Both research projects and networks have been funded, and to date, the majority of funding has been invested in transmission and surveillance. So diagnostics and environment are lagging a little bit behind the curve, and these are probably where funding will be coming for next. And finally, I'd just like to say thank you so much for taking the time to take part in this workshop. The team winning the event is brilliant, and I'd like to say a huge thank you to Climb Big Data and Phages for doing all the hard work to get this off the ground. And yeah, I'm sure you'll learn some amazing things. And I guess now I get to hand over to Team Klein. I don't know if uh, Mark or Andrew want to take the lead on introducing. Oh, there we go. <laughs> You're in the process of sharing the screen. 
So yeah, um, my name is Mark Pallon. I'm just going to give you a couple of minutes on Climb Big Data, uh, which is a project that I'm the director of. Um, this is basically a successor to a very successful project called uh, MRC Climb or Cli a Cloud Infrastructure for Microbial Bioinformatics that was funded by the UK's Medical Research Council uh, for a number of years. I'm not going to go through all these points here, but you can see the the fact we did make a decisive uh, um, influence, play a decisive influence in the UK uh, uh, microbiology support over those years. If uh, there's nothing interesting to watch on the television this evening, there's a, a link there to a, a movie that we uh, where we summarised our achievements during those seven years of funding. However, the uh, funding for uh, CLIMB came to an end uh, in, in 2019, and we submitted a, a new proposal to get additional funding. Um, and we um, were told that we must then move towards becoming self-sustainable, where we charge users rather than provide stuff for free. But we won a five-year, two million pound uh, MRC partnership grant, which funds this new project called Climb Big Data. Um, unfortunately, the project began just as the COVID pandemic uh, kicked into gear. And so we had a bit of a rocky start, but one of the things that we did actually manage to do with the infrastructure we already had was support the um, UK's and the world's uh, uh, efforts against uh, the COVID pandemic. This very busy slide here just summarizes all the kinds of things that we're looking to do uh, with the funding we've got, community engagement in things like this, training, uh, running workshops and hackathons and so forth. We're investing uh, in our infrastructure, keeping it up to date and adding new, new stuff, building uh, bioinformatics tools and integrating them. Uh, and we're, we're, we're sitting on top of a very a vibrant interdisciplinary team with a, a great a track record and a great environment. Um, Lisa Marchioretto is the, the one that keeps us going. She's the organizer for, uh, for all of our efforts and she's played a key role in organizing this meeting and in organizing the hackathon that took part earlier. So let me thank her uh, in advance for, for her efforts here. And this dashboard here just shows you, shows you some of the things we've achieved in, in, in the first year, year and a half with client big data, despite the, the pandemic coming in. Um, we, did, we did actually make a big uh, difference there in hosting all the UK's uh, coronavirus genome sequence data. Um, but I'm not going to go through all of these individual points. You can see that we've been quite busy, but we've already run uh, training workshops for beginners. Where we ran a, a workflow, uh, on, a, a training workshop on the Arctic workflow for analysing coronavirus genomes uh, and many other things. With that, I'll, I'll shut up now. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, everyone. That's a, so that's the, the many organisations that have intersected to uh, put this together. 